Howdy peeps and uh, welcome back to part two of the Edward Spitfire build series. Um, I've not done anything since part one and to be honest it was quite a while ago I filmed it so I can't actually remember where I got to. What I do remember is we're going to be doing the colour scheme on the box, the grey and green with the light blue or light grey-ish underneath. And you know, it's got a shark mouth decal, so win. Anywho, what have we got? We have most of the cockpit components assembled. And ready for primer. But there are a couple more bits left to do. Such as, I'm trying to remember where we got to last time. Right, so... I think we basically completed page one last time. Yes, we did. Apart from apart from putting decals on, which we won't do until everything's painted. So we've got that glued in. We will keep this as sub-assemblies rather than glue it all together and then try painting it. So the seat, it's a bit vague, but it looks like it goes on there. Something like that. Uh, yep, yeah. so we can glue the seat on. Oh, extra thin. I haven't actually stuck anything together for a while. I've been mainly in paint and uh, resin mode of late, so very little actual plastic gluing being done. So that's the seat on. We will attach the control stick as well, which I'm going to need to straighten that up, I think. Uh, somewhere around there. Here's where we find we should have glued this on before the seat, because that's got to go under the seat. Ooh. We're all right, it's in. Just uh, adjust that over slightly so it's in roughly the right area. And then I'm, oh, I forgot to put my overhead light on, haven't I? How rude of me. Oh, blinding myself. I was looking at it when I turned it on. Right. So next. And it's probably just going to white out the instructions even more because they're glossy and I am. I'm sorry about that, but there's not an awful lot I can do. Well, F4. We don't necessarily want to attach the instrument panel to it yet, but we'll grab sprue F. I've got to find the sprue F. Um, and... <clears> the <throat> thing with some Edward kits is they don't necessarily always make it obvious what the sprue number is. It's right up there in tiny little layers. Okay, so we want F4. And we have an option of which instrument panel to use. I would have assumed F5 goes in there somewhere, but uh, never mind. Uh, there is the two instruments, F66, which is a plain one, or F62, which has a, all the uh, dials, etc. moulded into it. We'll go with that one, and we can paint it. it. might not look as good as the instrument panel, but hey, you know, the decals... Normally looks pretty good in the, in the Edward kits. Let's have a look at it. Uh, yeah. I'll paint it. <laughs> um, oh dear, I've done something else silly as well. I just realised I had a clear up. I threw out my old sanding sticks, so I'm going to have to grab another one. And 
there's probably going to be a sound of explosions and crunching and crashing as I try and grab one. I do need to tidy up in here, there's muck everywhere. Oh. Yeah, oh, back in the mud. Sanders, there it is. Right. Right. Got a few to choose from. <laughs> um, yeah, it just pays. I'll make sure I don't run out. What do we want? We want. Oh, so many different flavours. What we got there? 1200, 800, 240. Alright, we want a 240. For now, at least. <clears throat> Later in the build, we'll be wanting the 800. Things where we don't want any sort of uh, scarring to show, as it were, on the plastic. So we'll just uh, slice that. Enough to pop an 800 grip one out. There we go. And do we need anything else? Don't think so at the moment. Right. I really should be more organised before I start doing these, shouldn't I? Oh, crunch. Oh, sprue on the floor. There we go. Right, I think I'm back now. So I'll clean up the attachment points. Same with the same thing I'll do with all these kind of bulkheads is I oh know I'm pulling it right out of shot. You may be able to see. There is kind of a indented seam line around the sides. Just to make sure we avoid any fit issues. We'll sand that down smooth and flat. Just to make sure A we get a good contact patch and B that the extra little bit of width there doesn't stop the fuselage from closing. That. and the bottom of the fuel tank right so let's see how this goes together that goes to the back and that goes in there just hope is there enough space to get the seat, etc., in between? Once it's all stuck, um, yeah, that can be manhandled in. That's okay. So we'll glue this into position. Ensuring we're flush with the bottom. Yes, it goes flush. And we just run a bit of glue. Splurge. sure everything's at right angles something like that and we have the instrument panel we I won't put together the compass and gun sights quite yet um, I will put the rudder pedals in though Otherwise someone will tell me off because I'll forget. You didn't put the rudder pedals in. 
Yes, but you're never going to see them once the thing's together. <laughs> so we'll just pop those off the sprue. One. Two. There we go. And I am going to be naughty and not bother cleaning these up because, well, not going to be visible. Tricky to get in position. Maybe a blob of glue will help hold it in position while I position it. I know that kind of sounds silly. But There is a locating mark on the underside of this piece for them. Just um, getting it to actually go in there. Assuming that is, I've got it on the right side. I might have it on the wrong side. Let's try it the other way around. Yeah, that fits a lot easier. <laughs> there you go. Pay attention to the instructions and stick things on the way around they're supposed to go. They fit a lot easier. Look like it's stuck on very straight to me, but I'm not sure whether uh, yeah, it is supposed to be straight. So, how that got that bent, I have no idea. We just have to soften the glue joints up the back here and straighten it up. Hoping that the tet will re soften. <laughs> I think it's been around about a month since I last glued these. And yeah, it's supposed to be at 90 degrees, not about 60. Come on. Come on. It all depends how good a job I did of gluing it if. Knowing me, there's probably a lot of glue on there. And this is going to be fun. We might have to chop this off and re-glue it. We never, you never know. What I've probably done is I've glued it and just put it down and it's sagged before the glue's set. That's not going to work. Hmm. Does that actually glue to anything or is it free floating? I think it might be free floating inside the cockpit so we can get away with it being at a slight angle. We'll leave that for now. Make any adjustments that need to be made when they need to be made. So we've covered everything we're going to cover on this page. Because now obviously everything needs to be primed, painted, before we glue the main parts together or we'll never get in there. Oh, excuse me, to paint them. So big blob of blue tack. And 
and just stick that on there. Grab my lethal looking man trap type device. You know, it's just a bit of uh, florist foam or oasis, whichever they call it these days. Got it from a pound shop. I've had it for about three years, so you know, <laughs> I'm not complaining about it. It does exactly what I need it to. And when this side finally gives up the ghost, I can flip it over and use the other side. So we've got those mounted up. Let's see. I just and the instrument panel. And what I'll do is just to save you the grief of sitting there listening to an airbrush going for a couple of minutes while I just prime them is I'll carry on with the build and I'll prime and well I'll prime these with UMP black primer the main cockpit parts I will then coat with interior green which I'm guessing is probably the colour I haven't actually looked, it will say somewhere. What is it calling out? C364, which is aircraft grey green. Yeah, I'm going to call that interior green. And then once I've got those primed, base painted, in the case of the instrument panel, just primed. I'll then show the detail painting and weathering. So, next page. What is next? Well, obviously we're not going to be gluing together the fuselage halves quite yet because we haven't put the cockpit together. But we can... So we do have some parts that glue in inside the fuselage, so we've got two wing, wing leading edge parts, the um, whatever it is, random shelf thing. <laughs> this is no engine or gun bays or anything in the nose of this, so quite why that's so I don't know. Probably just to help line things up, the prop mount, and a few holes to drill. Yeah, right. So, sprue eye. Why sprue eye? When you've got like, you've got five sprues in total. Why not go A, B, C, D, E? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There must be some some good reason for it. There's nothing in the bag. Oh, crack screw in the camera mount. So we start with Y3 being that one. And this is totally wiping out the camera. I do apologize. Blooming glossy instructions. Just snippy, snippy. Pink. Let's pop them both off. We're going to need them both anyway. Hoping there's not a huge amount of filling or anything to do on this because the amount of rivet detail is amazing. Right. If I just bring one of these fuselage halves up to the camera, 
with my hands behind it so it will focus on the fuselage half. You can see the level of riveting and detail etc on there. Very nice indeed. So now we just trim off the extra bits of the sprue gates. There's a mount to the back of the part on this. Should mean there is less sanding to do, but hey, we'll soon find out. And I'll clear the worst off with the 800 grit. As you can see, that's already left. Well, you might not be able to see because this the camera is quite a while away, so we've left scratch marks. So I'll just um, clean those up with the 800 grit rather than the 240. As we can see, it's making short work of these. And again, this is another thing I do when I am building, even with planes, I'll be back and forth through the instruction manual. Um, for example, if I had primed those parts, the cockpit parts, I wouldn't be sitting around waiting for the primers to dry. I'd be getting on with the next part. Or if I had another model on the go at the time, I would probably just switch models. <sighs> Tiny little nibble of flash there. So, we have our fuselage halves. Just to make people happy, I'm going to dry fit them to make sure they fit together. Yeah, near enough, that'll do. I generally work on the assumption that stuff's gonna fit. Right, it's actually telling us to remove parts. Hmm. For closed canopy only. Well, I'm gonna be doing it closed canopy. So, it's telling us to chop out this lip here. Razor saw time. It'll be quicker and easier. Probably make the annoying squeaky sounds. And that's far enough. Find lines to saw to. Although from the outside we really don't want to slip and put a big old scratch down the side of this. See through yet? Oops. Yeah, 
here we go. As soon as we go through, it gets a lot easier to saw. See that away. Oh, this is going to sound nasty. So that's that little bit removed. Do a quick clean up with the sander. Just to get rid of any excess fluffy bits. There we go. Now on this one it's just that little nub in there. time we're nearly there I think yeah well as I'll try and saw stuff back to front and upside down that's far enough that away There we go, got it. Again, one of the, it's one of those things, just, just be careful if you're doing anything like that where you're sawing parts out of the kit because things can go wrong mighty fast. Right, so back on the sprue F again. F2, chink, and F6. Well then, and one of them. So I was just uh, looking at the cockpit, I think there is another bulkhead that needs to go in there. Yeah there is, F56. So we'll go back and grab that in a moment. This part I'm really not sure why I'm cleaning up because it's of the never ever ever going to be seen with variety so See where we're gluing. I'm guessing if you put the brass in something or other in the nose, because I don't know if there is an engine that would fit in this, or I'm fairly certain there aren't any gun bays up on the top on a Spitfire. Probably just providing you with extra alignment. So, according to this, we want two one mil holes drilled in the front of the nose. There we go. Oh, one and a half better be okay. And I'm 
guessing probably the same on the other side, although it doesn't say so. No, nope, just this side. And another one in each of the leading edges. So we just if you drill through and you get a bit of push through from the drill, just push the push through back in the hole and drill back through from the other side. It usually clears it out quite well. There we go. So now we want G55 and 56. I'm guessing that's going to be sprue G. Guessing they're going to be fairly chunky parts. Uh, not really. <laughs> That's 55 and 56. I'll keep hold of this one because we've got to drill a hole in it. Oh, oh I just realised we hit the half hour mark. So, what I shall do is I shall get these cleaned up and glued on. And then I will prime and undercoat the interior off, well, interior, the cockpit off camera. And I'm just trying to figure out where it wants me to drill this hole. Eh, never mind. Yeah, so I'll get the cockpit bars primed and base coated off camera. And I'll detail paint and start the weathering on camera. Won't be a huge amount, be fairly similar to what I did with the SU-76 and I'll start painting the uh, instrument panel as well. But anyway, enjoy your modelling, thanks for watching, uh, peace, rock on, bye bye.